Hi, I'm Sam Luce here with Isotope. Today we are taking a look at mastering using ozone within Reaper. Now Reaper is well known within the audio community as being a fantastic door full of highly customizable features. And we're going to take a look at a few of those today. Mastering is all about getting your final mix to that point of mastered completion and adding the final bits of polish. And if your door can help you out, then you should utilize those features. Let's check it out. So I have my mix loaded into Reaper as a stereo file. This is a brand new session that I've created completely separate from the mix. Before I start processing any audio, I want to set Reaper up in a way that is going to speed up my workflow. Here's a couple of handy tips that will mean you can focus on the audio instead of navigating your way around the door. First up, I'm going to consider overall loudness of this track from the off. So I need a way of monitoring my LUFS level. Isotope Insight is a great way for you to keep track of all kinds of metering values, including LUFS. But if you don't own that tool, this built-in meter in Reaper will be especially helpful. I'm going to go to my track on the left-hand side, right-click and go down to meters. Here it's currently set to stereo peaks, which is normal for a door. But I can also choose LUFS. The first one with the readout at maximum will retain the maximum value, so it won't go up and down as you're listening. The one below with the readout as current will give you a current value of where your LUFS level is at that moment in time. I think this one's going to be quite useful in a mastering context, so let's select that. Secondly, I don't feel any need to see the mixer in this instance, because I'm just focusing on one track, and you can see that I've got it hidden. If you want to hide or unhide the mixer, you can press Command and M on a Mac or Control and M on a PC to hide it. Now I want to take a look at a few screen sets. Although screen sets aren't unique to Reaper, whilst I'm customizing my workflow, it makes sense to utilize them now. You can see the screen sets menu by pressing Command and E on a Mac or Control and E on a PC. There are three preloaded for me, which is great because that's exactly how many I want to utilize. Notice the right hand column that tells us how to save a screen set by pressing Shift and F4, F5 and F6. I can set up the first view that I want to use and this is going to be more or less a full screen on the waveform. So I'll close this dialog and then zoom in the appropriate amount to how much I want to see the track. With that now set, I can press Shift and F4 and that will allow me to save this screen set. I'm just going to call that master and click save. Next, I know that I'm going to want to top and tail this master by creating some fade ins and fade outs. So it makes sense to create a screen set that will automatically take me to the start and the end of the region. So I'm going to zoom all the way in on the very start of the track and then press shift and F5 and call this mastering start. Then I can jump to my full view screen set by pressing F4 and do the same thing to the end of the track as I know I'm going to want to create a fade here as well. With this in view I can press shift and F6 and call that mastering end. There we go. I've got my screen set set up. I can start processing this track. I want to start off by using Ozone's master assistant as this can get me to a great starting point for this track. I'm going to go to Effects and type in Ozone. Here I can bring up Ozone 9. When starting to process my master, I like to use Master Assistant as it gives me a great kicking off point. But first, I'm going to bypass everything and just check how the track is currently sounding. Okay, cool. I think there's some work to be done in the bottom end there, and we're sitting at somewhere around minus 19 LUFS, so we're going to need to bring that level up. But let's see what Master Assistant has to say. I'm going to bring Ozone back into play, select Master Assistant. For this track, I'm thinking a vintage vibe could be cool. Let's go for high intensity, 
and we're aiming for streaming platforms, then let's hit next and play some of the track for the assistant to analyze. Let's take a look at what Master Assistant has suggested for us. Okay, so it's added some bottom end, which is exactly what we kind of thought it needed. It's taken out some of the high end as well. We're maybe going to need to take another look at that. Vintage EQ is a really interesting module, and it's added a small amount of low boost, a really, really small amount at 60 hertz. We're going to take a look at this as well. Here, the vintage compressor is looking for any overly dynamic low frequency content to compress, but this track has a pretty solid low end as it is, so it's not making any changes. And to my ear, that's the right call. Vintage limiter, this is really just adding a little bit of vibe. It's not adding too much in the way of level. That's all being added by the maximizer. Let's just take a listen to a quick before and after with Ozone in gain match to hear exactly the starting point it's given us. There's nothing you can do or say That can make me turn away No excuse for you to make I'll be there for you anyway You might be Okay, it's definitely addressed some of the low-end issue that I had. You'll notice that it's clipping on the main output when the plugin is in bypass. This is fine. Because it's gain matching, it's bringing the level up but that maximizer is not in play, so it's not catching any of the peaks. So we don't need to worry about this too much. This is not going to be on our final output. I'd like to take a look at this first equalizer. I'm not completely in love with the way that it's taken out this top end. I think we can bring some of this back. That's the great thing about Master Assistant. It gives you a kicking off point, but it's not set in stone. You can then add your own changes and really make the master your own. So let's take a listen to this with Game Match off, listening up at our mastered level, and just tailor this EQ. I think we're going to need to bring some of this top end back a bit. There's nothing you can do or say that can make me turn away. No excuse for you to make. I'll be there for you anyway. You Okay, I think that's a slight improvement bringing back some of that top end. And I actually want to address that top end a little bit more with the Vintage EQ. Now this Vintage EQ works in a really interesting way. We can boost the high end as well as cutting the high end. If I just demonstrate, you can see on the curve here, as I add a load of top end, we're going to get a big boost. But then if we go to the cut, we can also bring down after that boost. So we can bring up some presence without bringing up too much of the super high end of the track. I'm just going to manipulate these controls as I listen to the track and see what I think fits to tailor that top end. There's nothing you can do or say that can make me turn away. No excuse for you to make. I'll be there for you anyway. You might be. Okay, so what I've done here is I've added some 12K in the top end, not too much. And although 6 dB seems like a large boost, I'm actually then bringing down the super top end after that. The curve is actually fairly gentle because of the kind of equalizer that Vintage EQ is. I noticed as I was at 8K, it was bringing up the presence and the top end of the guitar a bit too much. But 12K just added a bit more of a silky top end. Take a listen to this 12K and compare it to the 8K. When the 8K is engaged, you'll hear the guitar just come forward a little bit, and that's not exactly what I want. There's nothing you can do or say That can make me turn away No excuse for you to make I'll be there for you anyway I'm feeling that 12K a lot more. It's not adding that presence to the guitar, which can get a little fatiguing on the ear. I do feel like overall the vocal is getting a little bit lost, especially now we've added a bit of that top end. So let's go to one of my favourite modules. This is Master Rebalance. I'm going to put Master Rebalance first in the chain before anything. 
this is because I'm going to bring the vocals up and I want those vocals to be affected by the rest of the chain, the EQ, the vintage EQ, the limiter and the maximizer. I'm just going to bring up these vocals. I think it's going to be around 3 dB, but let's listen and hear where it sounds right. There's nothing you can do or say that can make me turn away. No excuse for you to make. I'll be there for you anyway. You might be that I can't see you past what you think is wrong with you, but I'll always Perfect. That's brought the vocal a touch further forward. And having it before the vintage EQ in the chain has meant that it's benefited from that slight high-end boost, which I think has really benefited the master overall. I'd like now to consider the stereo impact of the track. And I'm going to do this in a couple of different ways. The first is by using a module within Ozone. And the second way is another customization of Reaper. So first off, let's go to our Imager module. And I'm going to widen this mix in the area above 1K. I'm going to put the imager before the Vintage EQ, as I feel that that boost that the Vintage EQ is applying is going to be beneficial to the widened track. I think this track sounds a little too mono at the moment. In Ozone, if we go down to the stereo symbol, we can take a listen to the track in mono. And you'll hear that although this mix changes significantly when we flip to listening in mono, we can use Ozone to really spread this mix and create a wider soundstage. There's nothing you can do or say That can make me turn away No excuse for you to make I'll be there for you I think this mix would benefit from being a touch wider. So, let's widen it using the imager above that 1K region. I'm going to select my band 3 width and just bring it up slightly to around 25. Then we'll take another listen with and without the imager. And this is just going to help to spread the guitars and the cymbals. There's nothing you can do or say That can make me turn away No excuse for you to make I'll be there for you Okay, that's just added some brightness out to the sides. It's helped to spread that high-end touch, which has been beneficial. But there's a nice way within Reaper that we can monitor this side signal. The mono button is fantastic in Ozone, but when we've got it built into the door, why not use it? For this, let's view our master track. Here we have the mono button. When we click it, we'll hear everything in mono, in the same way as we did in Ozone. However, if we right click on it, we have some more options. Mono mode left and right means that it will sum left and right into one channel. That's our standard mono configuration. Mono mode left means we'll just hear the left channel. Right means we'll just hear the right channel. But mono mode left minus right means that we are just going to hear the side information. In the same way as we can EQ or compress something in mid side mode, where we process the mid channel differently than the sides, we can also just monitor the side channel. So let's click this mono mode left minus right. Then when we click the mono button, we will just be hearing the side information of the signal. There's nothing you can do or say that can make me when we then take out the imager, we will be able to hear that, that side information comes down. Listening to the sign information is useful when you just want to hear the stereo impact of a track without your judgement being affected by the weight and low end that will sit in the middle. With the fades down in place, let's take a listen to this track before and after the master processing. We can turn off all effects on the track very easily by just pressing this effects enable button. Let's take a listen. Okay, I think we're in a good spot here. Let's export this master. We're going to go to File and then to Render. And we have a multitude of different options here. The source is my master mix. This is the main output. 
and it's going to be the entire project. File name is going to be the name of the track with master on the end, that's fine for now. But we can also add some wildcards. We'll come on to that in a second. For this, I'd like the primary output format to be 24-bit WAV file. This is the highest quality we can get from this master. My secondary output format, I'd like to be WAV again, but this time 16-bit. This may need to go to CD, so we want to cater for that. But how do we know the difference between the 24-bit and 16-bit at quick glance? Well, we can go to our wildcards. We can select output format and bit depth. This means that the file name is going to be amended with the bit depth. So the 24-bit will tell you it's 24-bit and 16-bit will tell you it's 16-bit. That's super handy when exporting different file types. Reaper gives you a whole host of different options within the render dialog, so it's worth checking out all the different menus to find something that may be useful for your output format. Now I'm just going to render these two WAV files and I'll have my two different versions of my master. Here we can see the two different masters the Reaper has output for us, 16-bit and 24-bit. We can take a listen to either of these and make sure our master is exactly the way we want it. Thanks so much for watching. Reaper is such a fantastic and inexpensive door with such a great array of customizable features. If there's another door that you use that you'd like to see featured, please leave it down in the comments now. We read them all and we'd love to hear what you have to say. In the meantime, if you're an Ableton user, I've done a video on mastering with Ozone in Ableton 2, which you can check out now. I'll see you again soon. Take care.